Okay, so the month of June is um, Take Me and Use Me. The theme for the month of June is Take Me and Use Me. And we're just switching from the natural to the supernatural. And we are praying and we are fasting and we are waiting upon the Lord. So I, I want to set the ball rolling this morning with a very quick sermon titled, now if we see the length of the title of the sermon, you'll be scared. you would think that it's going to be a very long sermon, but it will not be. If the natural is not working, switch to the supernatural. So we, 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 want, to, we want to switch the supernatural in this June. And I believe that is going to be a blessing, a blessing to you this June. This June, I believe that there is going to be an outpouring of the power of God, an outpouring of the presence of God, and an outpouring of miracles and testimonies. If you believe June is pregnant with your miracle and with your testimony, can I hear your loudest amen? I sense here that in this month of June, the month of June that is upcoming, as we switch from the natural to the supernatural, and we tell God, Father, take me and use me, there will be some unusual testimony for some 10 people here. Can I hear those 10 people shouting the loudest amen? If the natural is not working, switch to the supernatural. There is a sermon I preached in a church for their Women's um, Day celebration. And I titled it, The Seven Women Who Had No Names But Made Names for Themselves. Like the woman with the alabaster box of oil. The Bible called that woman a sinful woman. But today we talk about that woman. She had no name but made name for herself. Like the Samaritan woman. The Bible didn't mention her name. But she made name for herself. Like the woman of Shunammite. The Shunammite woman. She had no name. But today we celebrate her story. Made name for herself. One thing ran through these women. They switched from the natural. To the supernatural. Today we want to take one of such women. To study how this woman switched from the natural to the supernatural. All of them had problems. All of them were going through difficulties. All of them were suffering. But some way, somehow, when they chose to switch from the natural to the supernatural, there was a testimony for them. Right now in this hall, right now in this chapel, there are women here who are ready to switch from the natural to the supernatural. If you are that woman, your amen should be louder. There is a man here who will take a cue from this woman, women, and will decide to switch from the natural to the supernatural. If that man is here, that man's amen will sound like a tender. It is insane to have a bunch of keys and try to open the door with a single key and the door is not opening and you decide not to try the other keys. Life is full of closed doors but a lot of keys. Don't get stuck with one key when the door is not opening. Change the key. You have tried a lot of natural things. Natural approaches to solving problems, they are not getting solved. And you are still doing it. Today, I was sent by God to tell you, switch to the supernatural. Are you here? So let's take the story of one woman who had no name. The woman was described by her situation. Her name got missing in the midst of that difficult situation. Like you, like somebody sitting here. They started using your situation to call you. 
Oh, that sick woman. Oh, that brother whose shirt is always torn. Oh, can't you see that sister who wears one wig all the time? Oh, that sister whose wig is like this and like that. Oh, you have forgotten that single lady. Oh, that lady, that lady. She's not married. And she walks like this. Can't you see? They have dropped your name somewhere. And they are using something to describe you. There's a woman we are going to study. She's called the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood. Her name is not mentioned in the Bible. She's called the woman with the issue of blood. But there are 13 life-changing lessons that we can pick from this woman with the issue of blood and our lives will change. Forget your title. You may have a title, but the woman with the issue of blood had a miracle. You may have a house, but the woman with the issue of blood had a miracle, had a testimony. I want you to pick lessons from this woman. I want you to copy the attitude of this woman as we prepare to enter into a month of fasting and prayer. Switch from the natural to the supernatural. There is something unique about this woman. I was telling my son, Kevin, this morning when we were finalizing this, this message, I said to her, the first major message I preached in my spiritual father's pulpit was the woman with the issue of blood. That time I, I titled it, Experiencing the Miracles. Now, I want to read the woman's story. And I'll share the 13 lessons. And we will live here. Mark chapter 5. Now when you are reading from the book of Mark. Mark everything. Mark everything. Let the book of Mark leave a mark on you. Are you here? All the stories in the book of Mark. Has indelible marks. Now. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. You are not alone. Somebody's situation was worse than yours. But she got answers. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. Because she thought, if I had touched, if I just touched his clothes, I would be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. She felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you. You see the people crowding against you. His disciples answered, and yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. To see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet. And trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. May somebody be freed from his or her suffering today. May your suffering never last one day in your life. Whatever burden you carried to this service, may you never walk out.
out of this door with the same burden. Anything causing you pain, any situation causing you distress, anything causing you sleepless night, may you be freed from your suffering. As you leave this service today, may everything causing you to suffer, may you leave it behind on this altar in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 13 powerful lessons. Number one, the woman was a subject. The Bible said that she was subject to bleeding. She was a subject. A subject is a topic for discussion. So this woman became a topic for discussion. People gossiped about her. People made mockery of her. The young man who should be proposing to her met at the beer bar and laughed at her. The women who should be having relationship with her shunned her. She became a subject. She became a subject. She became a subject. You feel you were a subject. You feel people are talking about your case. Your matter is in the public domain. You are feeling ashamed. You feel worthless. You feel there is no glory for you anymore. The same Jesus that changed the story of this woman is about to change your story. There are two levels in anybody's life. The gossip level and the gospel level. The gossip level is where people are spreading bad news about you. The gospel level is where you, is where you become a good news. And now they have to talk about your good news. Those who gossip about you is about to gospel about you. Those who spread the bad news about you, we, after this service, will spread the good news about you. Some time ago, I was a subject for people. They mocked, they teased. They said I would not amount to anything. I was then in my gossip era. Today, I am in my gospel era. <laughs> you are coming there. I see a solution coming to you right now. I see God solving that problem. That single problem that has reduced you in the eyes of many people. I see God solving that problem. If you are the one I'm talking to, your amen should be better. Number two, the woman was bleeding for 12 years. Do you know what that means? What that means is that, you see, in the Bible days, if a woman bled, she was declared unholy. The seat you sat on was unholy. The cup you used to drink water was unholy. The people you touched become unholy. So people will shun you. For 12 years in a religious society, this woman was declared unholy for 12 years isolated lonely she was so lonely she was seen as a stigma she was seen as a very dirty thing for 12 years but in my language they say something Anche, Anche, i don't know how to say it in english but Anche, Anche, wanna face. that everything will one day come to an end 12 years of bleeding, 12 years of rejection, 12 years of becoming a subject. When she met Jesus, just one day, you see, the story, the situation that will make you a story in the book like the Bible, sometimes when it comes, it's not dressed in suit, it is clothed in rags. And you would think, would this situation end me somewhere good? 
this woman bled for 12 years who would have thought that that bleeding for 12 years the problem she carried for 12 years was meant for her story to be written in the bible so that i can be here to speak to you your marriage age has passed for 10 years for 15 years for 20 years but it's meant for something all things will work together for your good. It is time to believe that everything happening around you, God has a purpose for it. Even if the devil intended it for evil, God will turn it into your good. If you are a Bible believer, if you believe in Jesus, you will not allow this situation to depress you. You will not allow this situation to steal your joy. I'm talking to some women here. Never allow, never allow the pain you are going through to have dominion and control over you. Because the Jesus that met the woman with the issue of blood, that same Jesus is in this house. That same Jesus lives in your heart. It may be painful. It may be disgraceful. It may have lasted longer than you anticipated. But he's the Alpha and the Omega. When that time comes for him to intervene, he will come. I sense that the reason why he sent me to preach this message is because somebody's testimony time has come. It is the turn of someone here to celebrate a testimony. If you are the one I'm talking to, I will hear your loudest amen. Twelve years of pain. Twelve years of isolation. Twelve years of disgrace. Took one day of encounter with Jesus for her life to change. Tell someone, look at somebody, tell the person, it's only a matter of time. And my testimony will be made complete. Wow. The woman suffered a great deal. And there are many doctors. Sometimes you don't even suffer from the problem. You suffer from the people who have taken advantage from the, of the problem. The woman suffered a great deal in the hands of many doctors. She was so desperate for solution that people say, I know a doctor in Kufuridia, she will go there. I know a doctor in Mamobi, she will go there. I know a doctor in Nima, she will go there. I know a doctor in East Legon, she will go there. She was so desperate and suffered in the hands of many people. I know, I know. I know what is causing you the most pain. It's not that your husband divorced you. But that the people you trusted the most rejoiced over it. What is causing you pain? It's not that you are homeless. But the people you housed one day, in the past, the people you housed have refused to help you. And not only refused to help you, but they have made your case a subject for discussion. You are so hurt by these people. This woman suffered in the hands of many people. But there is only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time that this God you serve will show up. It's only a matter of time. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't let them distract you. The, the people causing you to suffer more may be the person sitting beside you in church. It could be the person you are singing in the same choir with. The person you are in, with in the women's fellowship. The person you pray together in the men's fellowship. It could be that brother who is in your house every Sunday after church. Don't let their pain take you away from your God. Let no bad person take you away from a good God. Let no bad person suck you from a good church. Not everybody will sympathize with your situation. 
you would have expected that the doctors would have taken care of her but she suffered in their hands she suffered in their hands 90% of people who hear your troubles don't care about you. 8% of them care, but they can do nothing about it. It's only 2% who cares and can do something about it, but you are likely not to meet them. So 10 to 1 person who cares and can do something about it. Jesus. Jesus. The king of kings and the lord of laws. I came to speak to one person here. That you have suffered in the hands of many people. But the God you serve is about to step in. The God you serve is about to step in. The God you serve is about to step in. I heard one Nigerian complain on social media. He said, when you come to Ghana, even if they will take light, they will announce it before. They will announce it that tomorrow from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., light will go off. But as for Nepad, is this a Nepad or Nepad? Nepad. As for Nepad, they take light without announcement. But Jesus is like Nepad. He doesn't give announcement before he shows up. Are you here? He does not give announcement before he shows up. When you think it is over, when you think you are over, when you think that is the end of it all, when people have given up on you and people are shining you, you see him showing up. You see him showing up. Am I, I'm sensing in my spirit that Jesus is about to show up for someone here in this service, for a woman in this service, for a brother in this service, for a sister in this service. Jesus is about to show up. He's about to show up. He's about to show up. Number four. Kabaya. The woman spent all she had, but her condition got worse. Sometimes it's so depressing when you know you have made every effort. You know you have made every effort to get this problem solved. They told you to fast, you fasted. They told you to pay tight, you have paid tight. Men will follow you. You have done, you have dressed, you have done makeup. Which makeup have you not done? Foundation, pillars, roofing, painting. Oh! When you go home and you decide to wash your face, concrete. You have done all you can. Brother, they told you, brother, they told you education would take you out of poverty. You have educated yourself. But you are still in that problem. For 12 years, one problem, many, you are putting all the effort you have to put in. There was a situation with that woman. She spent all she had. And yet, and yet, and yet, the situation get, kept getting worse. You may be in that same situation. You have come to your wit end. This is where you are asking, is there even a God? That God exists. This is where you think, how many hours have, and days have I not spent in Achimota Forest? My bishop shared the testimony of how he spent several years in Achimota Forest. And God changed his life. I have spent more years in Achimota Forest. Yet my life has not become a garden, it's still a forest. God, what do I do? Sometimes God wants you to get here. He wants you to get to that place where now you know that nothing works without him. Nothing works without him. Let me tell you something. If this woman has bled for just one month, 
her story will not have been written. Even one year, her story will not have come here. I will not have been preaching on this woman after over 2,000 years. Today we are talking about a woman whose name we don't know. Your story is getting written. But you must go through this chapter. The chapter of pain. The chapter of agony. The chapter of hopelessness. The chapter of, of you trying to give up. The chapter where you are stretched beyond limit. You must get here for your story to be made complete. Tell somebody, this is not the whole story. Say it louder. Say, this is not the whole story. This is only a chapter of a whole book of me. Look at number five. Look at number five. The woman heard about Jesus. This is where the whole thing started changing. The woman heard about Jesus. Do you know why you are so struggling in that situation? Because you are hearing about prophet. I have heard that this prophet is good. I'm going there. I have heard that this man of God is good. I am going there. I have heard that the two of her has anointing for world creation. I am going there. I am suffering from poverty. I have heard that there is a prophet in Koforidia. I have heard that there is a prophet in Tamale. I have heard that there is a prophet. You have heard so many things except about Jesus. This was the turning point. The woman heard about Jesus. The woman heard about and it changed everything. If the sermon is not about Jesus, don't listen. If the sermon points to a man, it's a wrong sermon. It will not change your life. We preach our pastors, not Jesus. Our pastor is a good man. Our pastor is a good man. Our church is a good church. We don't preach church. We don't preach our pastor. We preach Jesus. You may not like the face of the pastor, but if the pastor is preaching Jesus, hang around with him. <laughs> Are you here? Oh, when we, got, when we got born again, it was all about Jesus. Every time we went to church, we heard about Jesus. We heard, how, we heard how he died for us. We heard how he healed the sick. We heard how he raised the dead. We heard, we heard the things he did. And so we put our trust in him, not in our pastors. We sang songs like, everywhere he went, he was doing good. A mighty healer, he cleansed the lepers. When the cripple, we didn't even know that it was when the cripple saw him. We said, when the people saw him. They started walking. It was, it was, we, we didn't know what was there, but we were still singing it. All the songs were about Jesus. All the songs were about Jesus. We, we had nothing. Everything we had was about Jesus. How much he loved us. How he died for us. During the COVID period, I was, I was listening to pastors who were becoming God. Me, COVID can do nothing to me. Me, COVID. Me, me. I was just looking at them. I said, so who are you talking about? You? 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 I've seen people who come and say, me, I'm a son of this. I'm a son of this pastor. You cannot touch me. I'm a son of this one. You cannot touch me. Well, I was taught that I was a child of God. I was taught that I was a child of God. Are you here with me? She heard about Jesus. 
He turned everything around. Now, let me show you something. Six. Look at this. The woman came from behind. Woman of God, immediately she heard about Jesus. Her position started changing. She has always been behind. But when she heard about Jesus, she left everything behind and came from behind. And came from behind. And came from behind. If we take this Jesus I'm preaching right now. The son of God I'm talking about right now. If we take him serious, he will change your position. I have never started every, anything from the front. But I always end up in front. You know why? I have never started anything from the front. But I always end up in front. Because I am always listening to Jesus. When the woman heard about Jesus, she came from behind. I see somebody at the tail becoming the head. I see somebody in the back bottom rising to the top. I see a sister being lifted from the valley to the mountain top. I see a change coming to you wherever you are. If you are the one I'm talking to, can I hear your loudest amen? From the moment she heard about Jesus, the next thing the Bible says about this woman is that the woman came from behind. You can't hear about him without your life getting changed. Are you here? If, if you come to a service like this and all you hear is people's household witches and how God open my, opens my eyes to see your great-grandmother and your great-grandfather and at the end of the day, a service of hundreds of people 30 people are prophesied upon and you hear the stories of people's weak, wicked uncles and aunties and you go home. No impact is made on your life. But when you hear about Jesus, you will come from behind. Am I preaching to someone here? Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. I didn't say say Jesus. I said shout Jesus. Jesus. I just said scream Jesus. The Bible says that at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Will you shout Jesus? I see things happening. I see things happening. I, I can feel some things are happening. Somebody is moving from behind to the front. Can you shout Jesus again? Remember blind Bartimaeus? What did he say? What did he do? He shouted, Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus heard him. Can somebody shout, Jesus? Say, that son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, Shalababaya. Mm. Mm. 